Hello again. Well, this is the Drake R4B receiver, and I've taken the um, calibration board off and been looking at it. It's got a FET right there. This thing is not oscillating. I can't get anything on the scope out of it, so I'm going to check this FET here. The diode looks good, and I couldn't find any capacitors that were directly shorted. These, I think, are counter ICs, and they're very primitive. They're very old, from the 60s, 68. Looks like there's a buffer NPN right there. Anyway, I took the board off, and it seems like it's getting voltage. It also gets a ground signal from the uh, calibration switch, so it works when you ground it from the switch on the front panel when you put the switch here in the calibrate it will ground the FET and get it working. So there's a schematic of the circuit in question. And I'm getting voltage from here. There's that little diode. So it just takes filament voltage at 12 volts AC. It rectifies that. And uh, it uses that as a voltage to run this transistor looks like a buffer there's the 100 kilohertz crystal so i'm trying to figure out how this thing supplied so this fet will get grounded this r72 a 2.2k is grounded via the front switch as I just showed you. So it'll ground it with that ground right there. That will start the calibrator to work. So power's got to be coming in through here for that gate and it's got to come in through here. I think I did major there's almost 12 volts here so that's making sense. I'm hoping the crystal's not dead. I verified this capacitor is not shorted. This variable capacitor is not shorted. So I did all the, did all the obvious things. I got to pull this out now and check it. And I guess that seemed okay, but it's been many, many years, 30 years since I've checked transistors. So I'm kind of rusty at it with my uh, little faithful multimeter here on the uh, diode scale. Got to relearn all this stuff I forgot about electronics. And that's how it is. So, Drake R4B. I'm hoping this crystal's not bad. I'm not quite sure yet how to check a crystal. I guess I could check and see if there's any boards for sale that work or do not work for parts, but it's more fun to fix this. So I guess the obvious choice is check this transistor and if I can't figure out how it works, buy a new one. I have an NPN laying around I can throw into here. And I hate being a hack like that, but sometimes you gotta just go with the obvious. That's why Captain Obvious makes money. This board though has a lot of crud on it. I was able to uh, take some crud off it. This radio was built better than the RTX I have, the, the TX2B. Looks like whoever was in this radio working on it was a little, a little more gracious with their soldering skills than the other radio. And as the previous owner told me, it looks like some people had replaced a few things in here. Um, you can look at some of these cans here and see that there's like some brass where they've been turned to death. That one looks way turned in. Uh, anyway, I'm not going to worry about the alignment until I get the calibrator working. This thing seems like it receives pretty good though, the way it is. The previous owner just didn't like the calibration, the crystal calibrator not working. But with that said, the frequency on the main dial seems like pretty dead nuts on. So I'm happy with that. 
seems like a nice high, high performance radio for 1968. So you can see there's been some capacitors replaced here, which is fine. Maybe some larger resistors. So someone's been in here taking care, caretaking this radio. I'm glad I was able to uh, buy it from the gracious previous owner. Looks like it had a good home and it was well taken care of. Anyway, I'll appreciate it if I can get, oh, I appreciate it, period. Even if the calibration doesn't work, I like the radio. It's a fine, fine radio. Okay, thanks for watching. If you have notes on the uh, calibration board, let me know. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.